type aliases in TypeScript. In today's video, you're going to learn what a type alias is, what the syntax of it looks like, and how you can create your own type aliases. And then we're going to talk about some key things that you need to know about how they don't just work for objects, optional properties, read only properties, and also covering kind of how a type alias is just an alias. And TypeScript's not going to be able to differentiate between an alias and a different type. But if that doesn't make sense, we'll cover it here towards the end of this video. So first off, what is a type alias? Well, a type alias in TypeScript is effectively a custom type in which you create your own type based on kind of the primitive types in TypeScript and you give it some label. So it's basically giving a label to your own custom type. And this allows you to have all the benefits of how it would be like using a variable in your program or using a label for some value. You can create this and then you can reuse it over and over again and prevent that code duplication. So the syntax of a type alias looks as follows. So here on line 12, I have a custom type here, which is a type alias called point. And the way that you can create your own custom type is by using the type keyword that's telling TypeScript, I want to create a type alias here. And then following your type keyword, you can use the label for your custom type. So here I use point. And then you want to use the assignment operator. And I'm going to assign this custom type here to my label of point. So my type, it's actually going to be an object type here. So I open up a pair of curly braces and it's going to have two properties, X and Y. And both of those are going to be a number to represent my point type. And then the way that I would use this is just how I would use any other type in TypeScript. Here I have a function called print chord. It takes one argument here, PT, standing for point. And it is going to be of type point. So I give it the annotation of my custom type here. So I'm telling TypeScript, I expect this function to be passed to one argument, point. And this argument is going to be an object with two properties, X and Y, and those are going to both be numbers. So I'm expecting to pass this function an object with X and Y properties. And then it's just going to council log those out here. So if I call this function, TypeScript is going to enforce that I call this function with the proper type here, an object with the properties of X and Y. You can see if I don't have these properties, I have a property called Z here. TypeScript's going to give me an error and it's going to say argument of type, this object with X and Z is not assignable to type point because point has properties of X and Y. So it's going to enforce those types here to my custom type alias. And then I could use this over and over again in my program anytime I want to represent some structure that has an X and Y property. Now type aliases, you don't need to just use them for object types. You can use them for all sorts of different types in your program. So here I have a type ID and then I create a type union. This ID is going to be a number or a string. So I can use this ID type here if I want some value to represent a number or a string. And if you haven't seen my video on unions, that will help you understand more of what's going on here if you aren't familiar with what that is. So here on line 28, I have my ID and I give it the type of ID here. So it's got to be a number or a string. And here I assign it to the number 12. That is just fine. Here I assign it to a string, which is the string 12. That is also just fine because it can be a number or a string. But when I try to assign it to an array here, I get an error because my ID type is not assignable to an array here. All right. So you can use a type alias for any custom type that you want to create in your TypeScript programs. Now, one cool feature of type aliases is if you're creating object types with them and you want to create an object that has optional properties, then you can use a question mark operator. And this is going to allow you to tell TypeScript, hey, this property is going to be either of this type or undefined. You don't necessarily need to have this property on this object. So here, my custom type, paint options, it's going to have two properties, an X position and a Y position. And I put a question mark right behind the label X position before my type annotation here. And that's telling TypeScript that is effectively the same thing as doing this. That this X position is going to be a number or undefined. It's basically shorthand for doing that. All right. 
So that is an optional property, which means that TypeScript is not going to enforce that I have this X position on this paint options. It is an optional property. So if I have a function called paint options and it takes my options, and that is the type of my type alias here of paint options, and then I call this function, well, I can call it with just the X position alone because the Y position is an optional property. I can call it with just the Y position because the X position is an optional property. And then I can call it with both here. But if I tried to add a third property here like Z position and give that a value, it's gonna give me an error because that does not exist on my type of paint numbers. And if I hover over this, you can see that my type annotation here, it gives you just what I kind of described. When you put the question mark before your kind of type annotation there, it's basically the same as doing a union between whatever that type is and undefined. So it's gonna be that or undefined. And that is how you can use optional properties on your type aliases. Now you can also use read only properties and you can do that using the read only keyword. So here on line 51, I create a type alias called some type. And then here before my property, I use the keyword read only. So read only prop is colon string. So this property is gonna be a string, but it's gonna be read only. And this doesn't mean that the value is necessarily immutable but it does mean that you cannot reassign this property. So it's kind of similar to a const declaration for your variables. You can mutate an object within a const declaration, but you can't reassign it to a brand new object. And that's kind of the same thing here. If this was an object, I could change the values within that object, but I couldn't reassign it to an entirely different object because it's read only. All right, so there is a slight difference there between being immutable and read only. You can see here, if I have a function called do something and it takes an object that is my type of some type, you can see that I can access my property here and I can read it, but if I try to reassign my property here, I'm gonna get an error and it's gonna say, hey, cannot reassign to prop because it is a read only property. So that is how you can create read-only properties within TypeScript. Now, one thing with type aliases that's important to remember is that an alias is just an alias. It's just a label for some type. And TypeScript is not gonna be able to differentiate between an alias and an actual type. So if I create a custom type alias here called myNum and I assign it to a number, so I'm creating a custom type alias of a number, well, TypeScript's not gonna know the difference between this type alias and just using a number type annotation. So if I create a variable called X and I give it the type annotation of my num here saying it's gonna be the custom type alias, which is a number, well, I could still assign this my num custom type alias to just a number type. So here I have a variable called Y and it is a number type and I assign it to X which is my type alias of my num. That is totally doable because TypeScript, it's gonna say, hey, you have a variable called number and you're assigning that to a number here. It's not gonna care if you try to assign a type alias to a kind of more primitive type in TypeScript if they match structures. TypeScript's gonna be okay with that, all right? So it's not gonna be able to differentiate if something just has a label versus something that is kind of a primitive type in built-in in TypeScript, and it's not a custom type alias, all right? So that is type aliases in TypeScript. In future videos, I'm gonna cover type interfaces, interfaces versus type aliases, and different stuff like that. So thanks for tuning into this, and I'll see you in that next one.